Welcome to this week's video where we continue our list of the kings of France by taking a look at the kings of the House of Valois. Between 1328 and 1589, France was ruled by the House of Valois, which was related to the previous French dynasty, the House of Capet. After the death of Charles VIII of France in 1498, the house was split into two branches, Valois-Orléans and Valois-Angoulême. It lost its claim to the French throne in 1589 after the death of Henri III of France, but was succeeded by a related dynasty, the House of Bourbon. Now let's take a look at the Valois kings. As mentioned, the first Valois king was Philip VI of France. Following the extinction of the main Capetian branch on the male side, the throne passed to Philip in 1328. Immediately after his accession, he intervened in Flanders' internal struggles in support of the reigning count against the rebellious urban communes. This, together with a dispute over Guienne, caused a rift with Edward III of England. The Hundred Years' War broke out in 1337, in which France suffered heavy defeats. During Philip's last years, the Black Death ravaged France. Philip is known as a chivalrous and valiant king, but with no demonstrable statemanship and no contact with the bourgeoisie. His government policy did not follow the administrative lines of his predecessors. Upon Philip's death in 1350, the crown passed to his oldest son, Jean II of France. Jean pursued his father's chivalrous way of governing. His reckless and violent behavior against King Charles II of Navarre and some high noble vassals led to a renewal of the One Hundred Years' War with England. Jean was defeated at the Battle of Poitiers, despite being outnumbered, and was captured by the Prince of Wales. He was released from captivity, but returned to England to avoid breaking the laws of chivalry when his son Louis, who had been left as a hostage, escaped and died in England. During his reign, the gap between the feudal nobility and the rest of the population became increasingly apparent and the country was shaken by several rebellions. He died in 1364 and passed on the throne to Charles V. Charles was a very religious man who revered his ancestor Saint Louis IX. He was a tolerant king and a lover of luxury. Charles spent a lot of money surrounding himself with precious objects, transformed and embellished the Louvre royal palace and completed the Chateau de Vincennes. Charles was an educated and literate man, a lover of philosophy and the sciences, and founded the first royal library in France. It was housed in the Louvre and was equipped, among other things, with translations of ancient authors made especially for Charles. He died in 1380 and was succeeded by his son, Charles VI, who was only 12 years old at the time. Due to his young age, the king spent the first eight years of his rule under the regency of his uncles. In 1388, Charles became the independent ruler of France. Unfortunately, the mental health of Charles was weak and he was often referred to as a madman because he was under the belief that he was made of glass and therefore dared not to move out of fear of breaking, which left him unfit to govern the country. In 1416, Charles' son, also named Charles, became Dauphin of France after the death of his older brothers. As the mental health of the king, and consequently the instability in France increased, Charles VI signed the Treaty of Troyes in 1420, stating that Henry V of England would rule during the lifetime of Charles VI and that he would ascend the throne of France after Charles' death. But when Henry V and Charles VI died in 1422, Henry VI of England claimed the French throne. The Armagnacs, on the other hand, joined a legitimate heir to the throne. Only after the intervention of the mythical Joan of Arc, Charles VII was recognized as king. During his reign, France's first standing army was established, the royal power was strengthened, the financial and judicial systems were also organized, and the freedom of the Gallican Church was asserted by a new pragmatic sanction. The last years of Charles's reign were spent fighting with his son, the Dauphin Louis, and he is said to have died of starvation for fear of being poisoned by his son. In 1461, Louis succeeded his father as Louis XI of France. As king, he fought against the power of the feudal princes, 
which caused Louis XI to be characterized as the worst king France had ever known, and he was often compared to a spider who wove his webs everywhere to entangle his victims in them. Historically, though, Louis XI is considered one of France's most important rulers, gifted, educated and energetic. Louis died in April 1498 and was succeeded by his son Charles, who became known as Charles VIII of France. Charles was weak and sickly, but keen to appear as a great warrior king, Charles laid claim to the Kingdom of Naples. As a result, he launched a series of wars against several Italian states. Charles died in 1498 as a result of a silly accident when he hit his head on a door frame, which caused him to fall into a coma. He probably died of a hemorrhage. With him, the older line of the House of Valois became extinct, as he had no heir, and the Valois-Orléans bloodline took over. The throne passed on to Louis XII, who was nicknamed Father of the People by the Estat General of 1506. During his reign, Louis embarked on the Italian wars, notably the Third and the Fourth, and on the domestic front led a reform of justice and taxes. His image was cultivated after his death as a symbol of a moderate monarch relying on the Estat General in contrast to the absolute monarchy. Louis had two daughters, but no sons. In accordance with Salic law, the crown could not pass on to women, and so the Valois-Angoulême bloodline came to power. In 1515, François I was crowned king of France. François I is considered the emblematic king of the French Renaissance period. His reign allowed for a significant development of the arts and letters in France. Furthermore, the reign of Francis I was punctuated by wars and important diplomatic events. He had a powerful rival in the person of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V and had to rely on the diplomatic interests of King Henry VIII of England, who was always eager to place himself as an ally of one side or the other. François I recorded successes and defeats, but forbade his imperial enemy to realize his dreams. He died in 1547, leaving the throne to his second son, Henri II of France. Henri continued the political and artistic work of his father. His reign also marked the rise of Protestantism in France, which he repressed with a stern hand. Faced with a large number of supporters of the Reformation, Henri II was unable to settle the religious question, which led to the wars of religion after his death. In 1550, he was injured during a jousting tournament and died ten days later. The throne passed on to his eldest son, François II, who was only 15 years old at the time. The young king was sadly of bad health and he died after reigning for only one year and five months. The throne now passed on to the second son of Henri II, Charles IX. Charles IX, who was born in 1550, was only 10 years old at the time he became king of France. The kingdom was placed under the regency of his mother, Catherine de' Medici. During his reign, the kingdom was torn apart by the wars of religion, despite his mother Catherine's best efforts to prevent them. After several attempts at reconciliation, his reign culminated in the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. The bloody event left Charles severely depressed and he died without legitimate children at the age of 24. This placed the third surviving son of Henri II, namely Henri III, on the throne of France. Henri III inherited a divided kingdom where his authority was only partially recognized. His reign was marked by major religious, political and economic problems. Four wars of religion took place during his reign. On July 9, 1559, Henri was stabbed by the monk Jacques Clément and the last king from the House of Valois died of his injuries the next day. He was succeeded by the King of Navarre, who, as Henri IV, ascended the throne of France after converting to Catholicism as the first French king of the House of Bourbon. Join me next week for an overview of the kings of the House of Bourbon. Thank you for watching.